welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker Training. I'm Richard Carlton here. Welcome, everyone. Woo. Moving along. So today's broadcast goes from, you know, conversation, strategic direction of the entire platform to printing receipts. How pedestrian, but it's not quite so pedestrian. So what I want to do is welcome Jeff Cooper. Jeff Cooper, are you there? I am here. Cool. So we're going to get into Jeff here briefly in one second. Uh, we already have his. We're going to be sh uh, shuffling between uh, Jeff's one of our engineers. He, we're going to be shuffling between his uh, webcam, which is pointed at the receipt printer, and also his screen. And he's going to walk us through some of the latest, greatest stuff with receipt printers. Today is day one of a basic, to a, and then there will be a more advanced one in about two or three weeks. So briefly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my browser, and I'm going to move myself over here. And what I'm going to go to, fmtraining.tv. So for those of you who aren't around here too often and wonder what we're doing, this is a daily live stream, a 1 o'clock live stream about the FileMaker platform. We're learning about new things. I'm being inspired by you. I'm hearing stories from you. We're trying to inspire you back, show you things, teach you how to do go better, farther, faster with the FileMaker platform, right? And so... Um, this is all free every day at 1 o'clock is free so my ask of you my request of you I don't need oh send me some free patreon welfare money no 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 how about you just buy 100 hours of training for an amazing low price so all the training we have here on all the current products including previous products and previous versions and everything every one of these little boxes is a video course right you come over here to a bundle so you go to fmtrain.tv you press the bundle button and buy a bundle that meets your needs right buy a uh, complete bundle with everything, including a full copy of FileMaker Pro. It's a one-year subscription for the training and for FileMaker and everything. Or you can get just the video learning on its own for one year for 199 bucks. Um, it's vast. It's the by far the best training out there. It's the most comprehensive. Period. Right. 100 hours of dedicated training. Um, and I always tell people my investment in this stuff is about half a million dollars a year. So that's what it costs to put this stuff together. So instead of me saying please give me welfare money which I, I'm not a big fan of go to Patreon and you know donate how about you just uh, break out the old credit card like a bunch of the people here brought them in a bunch of you done that and buy the training and that way that funding goes into this part of it keeps it going so if you come over to fmtrain.tv you can uh, buy the bundle you can also press the training, uh, the live training button this shows you the upcoming schedule so today is receipt printers tomorrow Kyle Williams, all of the for those of you who wonder the crazy person who always tells you use JSON and use custom functions, use SQL. He's kind of like the anti Nick, right? So if Nick, if you have too much Nick, you want anti Nick, you need like a, a a cure for Nick, or or if you have too much Kyle Williams, you need a cure for Kyle. You inject some Nick. They're like literally matter and anti matter. Talk about almost polar opposites in terms of their design philosophies. Really kind of funny. I want to show you a couple. Um, kind of lay the groundwork on this. So, uh, Jeff Cooper, are you there? Let's just get your audio for the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm looking at some still images that were cut out. So what I want, I'm going to start at the bottom. So this is a printer. What printer are we doing here, and why do we care about this printer, and why did you choose this printer? Uh, so this particular printer is a Star TSP6542. Um, I'll show the web page here for in just a minute. Um, there's actually a few of them that will work with this, though. Uh, and the reason we picked it is because... It has a technology called um, WebPrint on it. And basically, the printer has its own mini web server that handles HTTP requests. Keep going. It's good. So are they, are they like a reputable uh, company? They're not a yep, reputable so, Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Star, Star is a huge uh, huge company. Most A lot of receipt printers you see are either Star or Zebra. There's a few other out there, like Epson uh, has a lot and uh, a couple other options, but Star is in a lot of areas. They're relatively affordable when it comes to you know integrated hardware, where you're spending three four hundred dollars for one of these printers. Okay. Um, but you know um, they they last a long time. They're they're pretty simple. Okay, great. So uh, this is a couple shots of it, stills of this, and then over here, this is the kind of printouts we're talking about. Now, I guess we should talk about the idea that in, in FileMaker, most of the time we build a layout and it prints a layout. And, and we're going to be do, trying to do that in an advanced session, but today we're going to be doing the basic printing, right? And so I need you to kind of frame that part of the conversation because that will be kind of the, uh, I think, the basic part of this, right? I, 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 th I think sure. the, uh, the people just understanding how this prints because it's very kind of almost, I don't want to say dossy, but I mean, normally what you see is what you get, WYSIWYG, right? And that's how we, right. we've done stuff since Microsoft Word came out on the Mac and 
and you had all that stuff back in 1988 or 87 or whatever <laughs> it first came out. So, so whenever you don't do WYSIWYG printing, a lot of us wanted to go want to know why. So why don't you? I'm going to jump to your screen now. You want to talk us to? I mean, why don't you give us a quick? Just make sure it runs real quick. Show us how fast it goes. Start with sure that because we see your screen or see your up uh, the video there. Why don't you shoot one out so we can all see it's lickety split. It's not this slow dot matrix. Right. In fact, count down. In fact, count it down when you do it so we can see the speed. Okay. One, two, three. It's always slow when you first start it up. Uh, and that's it. Okay. So, so. And if I send another one, it's very quick. Oh yeah, so very I fast. Click, so I click send right this, now. This thing I'm used to. I'm used to image writer dot matrix <laughs> printers and things that like are or the label writers that are really slow. Right. So that was pretty quick. So. So you want to? We have some questions already. We all have crap oh, questions. Oh. <laughs> uh, Larry wants to know if it's ribbon or thermal. Uh, this particular one is a uh, thermal printer, but they do have an, a model that's an impact with a ribbon, which is kitchen safe. Uh, and actually, let me change it over to my screen here. Give me just one second. So uh, this is all of their models that are uh, web print capable. So they've got uh, their more affordable, modern looking one, an impact for kitchens. Uh, this particular one that we're working with, which is thermal, and also this uh, this other one, which I think there's a like a lockable model for healthcare applications. All right, I have a question. What is kitchen safe? Does that mean it's not gonna uh, like take a knife to you and cut you on your onion? I, I mean, it probably won't, right? So the issue with a kitchen, right, is that this printer uses, uh, it uses heat to print to the paper. Um, and so with in a kitchen, uh, those those printers are sitting above a big stove or something like that where it gets hot. Uh -huh. And if you've ever seen a receipt that sits in the sun too long, it turns black. Uh -huh. uh, that's because it's it it's just activated with the heat. So what this does is it actually pushes it through a ribbon. It's it's more like almost like a typewriter type um, type okay. printing mechanism. It uses a ribbon uh, to, to print so that way it's heat. It won't be affected by the heat of so of flying grease and cuss words and greasy dead chicken stuff. That's all fine for the printer, but heat is bad. Got More it. or less. Um, I think this model also has like an integrated power supply, so it's a little bit, uh, it's it's a little bit more enclosed. But but in general, that's that's the the bigger difference is the printing mechanism itself. Ah, okay. I did not know that. I didn't know that was a thing. Listen, my first job was digging ditches. I never actually worked at a McDonald's for my first job, so I don't, you know, yeah. know that. So, yeah, but I dug ditches, literally dig a ditch, right? And then I dug some more ditches. What else? So you got, so you, which, is this the one we're doing here? Which one are we doing here? Yep. This is the one we're doing here, and this is the same model we've got. Um, there's several options, but the one that, uh, that allows us to do what we're doing here is one that's either got Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Uh, this particular one has Ethernet because it's a lot more stable uh, than Wi-Fi in production, so. Okay. Uh, they've got a few particular models. So uh, let me just show you. So when you get it, you'll plug it in. Uh, it'll be on DHCP. It's super simple. Um, so you have to identify which, uh, what IP it's at. This one I've already done that with, but uh, I've actually already set it up, but that's okay. I'll show you what this kind of looks like here. Um, so this is your configuration page where you can come in, you can set a lot of, uh, you can set your basic settings. You don't actually have to change anything so this what, out of the box. Just to be clear, this, as long as you know. this website came okay. out of the printer. So we're talking, this is a right. web page from the printer. For those of you who've never seen this before, yep. this is how a lot of modern stuff is done. You actually have a little baby web page driven by the, by the device. Okay. Yep. Since it's got a web server anyway, it's able to do that, no problem. Um, but yeah, so this is our configuration page for that. Like I said, out of the box, it'll work as long as you know the IP address, and I believe the default port is 8001. Um, okay. That's what you need to know. You can log in. The default is uh, root and public. Uh, and it gives you all kinds of settings where you can even you can even upload an SSL certificate, create a self-signed certificate, all that kind of stuff if you want. Um, the most important thing here is this web print tab. I've changed it to 80, so I don't have to worry about ports. Um, but that's about that's more or less about it. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the manual where you can have it. You can make the printer itself print the IP address. That's the easiest way to determine what it's done when it's not set to a static one, um, which you can also do. Uh, you can do in here. I have mine done through my router, so it just always assigns to the to the same one. But 
Um, regardless, that's that's the most important part is knowing the IP address, or I guess if you have a URL attached to it, the URL for it. Um, so, okay, cool. So at that point, once that's all done and you've run the save command, which reboots the printer, um, you're basically ready to go here. Okay. And this is our little test file. Okay. Um, so so once again, we're not building right in this in this live stream today. We are not building a layout. That. So we're not going to find right. a layout that looks like that receipt, right? Which is no. normally how everyone here immediately thinks that's the way to do it. So we're going to try to do that. Nice. Try to do that as an advanced session in about two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Right. But for this yeah. one, we're going to do it. So how does this then? If we can't do WYSIWYG, then what the hell are we doing? Walk us through this. So the way that the way that this works is essentially an XML document that you pass through it, just formatted a certain way with the, the right parameters. And so we've I've written a whole list of scripts that um, simplifies that significantly. And so what you do is you add your elements as you want from the top to the bottom. Um, and those tell the printer exactly what to print. These, this is really useful for something like a packing slip or a receipt. You, you build your standard top and, and, and you know, your footer, your header and your footer. And then your body, you just have a loop that goes through all your line items uh, for the sale or all the items that are in the packing slip or, or something along those lines. Um, and it allows you to print it and, and there's no limit to the length. Well, I guess outside of the amount of paper left in the printer, um, but it can handle a whole lot of stuff, including it'll generate barcodes just based on the value. Um, there's nine 2D barcodes uh, formats that are supported and also QR codes are supported. And I'll show you those uh, in just a little bit. Um, but it'll it'll do all that so you don't have to worry about generating barcodes and turning them into containers, which is actually really nice um, when you're trying to print quickly. And like somebody pointed out in the Discord, you could print from anywhere in the world uh, as long as you have access to that printer, whether it's via a VPN or, uh, or if it's externally accessible, um, if you have a static IP or something like that. Um, so the, these are these are pretty straightforward. It doesn't matter it, what if it, it's not USB like a normal printer or like a lot of printers are. Um, you can print to it from any computer, and there's no print dialog, which is super nice for your users. Um, you don't have to have a print dialog that has all the right options set or anything like that. This is a curl command. You said curl command, which means you know JSON, other stuff like that. So Kyle, so easy Kyle. <laughs> well, this actually won't take JSON. Web print takes. Uh, when I say quasi XML, the reason why is the the elements themselves they want them um, uh, basically web encoded. So they we replace the the carrots with the these uh, web safe or URL safe uh, um, strings that replace them. So it looks really weird. It doesn't fit in normal like XML formatters, um, and it can be a little bit difficult to read. But that's I don't know why they do it like this. But if you send it with normal XML with these like put appropriately, it'll freak out, it won't print anything. So <laughs> uh, that's that's fun, but no JSON for this. Uh, unfortunately, they don't, uh -oh. they don't take that. All right, so so is is this this is this the stack of stuff that prints from top to bottom? Is that what this is, like line items over here? Yeah, so this is a portal um, to, the, uh, to the items that are on the document. So this is a, a table of documents, mm -hmm. and this is the document line items. So the way I have this simple setup is we have a slide control here with various options for each of the types. Um, and so you come through and say we want to, let's let's do a new document here. Yeah, um, let's just start with the beginning. I want to say, um, let's give the award for, uh, let's, uh, is, we're going we're gonna to issue a ticket, a ticket. We're, we pulled over uh, David, was it David Angel, our person from yesterday, and he's getting a not safe for work uh, meme ticket, right? So he needs to be busted. <laughs> so sure. let's do that. So um, you don't 100% of the time have to do an initialization element here. Um, I do it because it's there, so there's got to be a good reason. I'm not sure why they do it, but um, it they probably do. It probably times out after a while would be my guess. So. Uh, maybe, but although, like I said, I've, I've printed without one before, so I'm not, I'm not really sure why it works some, it, without it, but it it's probably good form to always use that. Okay. So, um, so say we want to we want to make that the, the top of this say uh, not safe for work ticket, yeah. and we want it to be aligned center. So what you do is you add an alignment element, and that says everything after this until we say otherwise is going to be whatever the uh, 
okay. position that we say it is. So we're going to make it center align. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to come down text. here, and we're going to say In. not safe for work. Okay. Yeah, ticket. Oh, oh, yep, ticket. We're okay. gonna. We're even gonna bold it. Give it emphasis. Yeah, it needs. To, it needs to be big. It needs to be big, big, right. as big as you can make it. How big can you make stuff? How's that work? Um, so there's there's some parameter, some controls here, but to make it sort of like a um, a good header size, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just set this width to two mm -hmm. and these height to two, and these aren't particularly user friendly numbers. It's their parameters that they've set and they make no sense clearly made uh, by a, a windows areas. company who sucks but yes yeah if, yeah if, so yeah. there's that so we'll go ahead and add this text element and that's going to stick that right there give us our defaults back here mm -hmm. uh and then we're going to feed it we're going to tell it's got to go uh 32 uh i think it's pixels down okay. that's their it's their unit um and then we're going to come over here we're going to say um yeah. What should we add to it? So well, we need his name. We, yeah, we not. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, so then, here I'll give you the text, and just go ahead and put it. Start, oh, we're gonna want. Yeah, left. Go left. Yeah. Uh, let's do a let's do a line here. Let's give it a good break, okay. and feed it one more time. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and do a left align. Yep. Yep. So very we'll programming, like top to bottom. So then the text is gonna be, a felony. Uh, in it, and then not safe for work. Uh, dis, uh, display of meme display dis no no yeah, oh oh yeah okay I see like you say display of meme uh, uh, with 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 blatant disregard for the law there we go keep going <laughs> with blatant let's, let's do this with blatant. there's there's a limit to it'll just cut off a line if it's too long uh huh so there's a little bit of testing there to to regard okay keep going of the law. Oh, yes. We'll make this one line so, long to see. If yeah, let's see what happens. So, All right, so as you can are see, we that, good? We'll add the text element. Yep. So now what we'll do is just to make sure it fits. Uh, we see the whole thing. We're gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and feed this a lot longer than I normally would, just because. Okay. Uh, just so it's obvious on the camera, and we're also gonna add a cut here, so we can tell the printer to go ahead and cut the paper. If we don't, it won't. Yeah. Um. So now let me switch. Let me stop sharing so we can watch this. Press yep. I'm just gonna click the send button on this screen. So we're going to send it, and it's going to think about it for a second because it hasn't gotten a request in a minute. But And we broke it. Oh, my God. It's just, it, you know, it went out for a coffee break. So we can see here there's a few things we'll have to adjust uh -oh. because we used big text up at the top, but that's okay. That's easy enough to learn. Uh, it's a little bit of testing uh, here. So. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll yeah. come. We will we'll yeah. come back here. Share our screen. Because yeah. we're gonna want to walk through this script a little bit. Um, yeah. But but this file, so, we're giving all of you this file because this file was built by Mr. Cooper here. Mr. Cooper, good job on that. Thank you. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, I'm gonna change our feed. I'm gonna make it a little longer after we say not safe for work ticket at the top. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that'll just make sure we have enough space with the uh, with the line. Uh -huh. And the other thing that this does, another way you can handle that if you don't want to do feeds, uh -huh. is uh, you can add carriage returns to your text, and it will yeah. automatically um, encode them with the hex code value, which the printer will parse appropriately. So, for example, if instead of using this feed, let's just get rid of it and come here, and we're going to add... I'm going to type this in just because... I'm manually editing this. This is, you would generally run this through the script, but that's okay. Zero A. So now the printer will know there's a carriage return, and I'm going to stop sharing and click. All I'm going to do is click this send. Oh, hang on, hang on, one second. We got a problem here. Before sure. the cut, can we insert something? How do we insert something? You have so the way uh, the way I wrote this file, there's no good real way to add a line in here, but I can delete the cut and add. D delete add the cut. Delete the cut. Sure. Delete the cut. So mm -hmm. we need a. Uh, uh, some more text here because it's sure. been suggested that Scott Kane, we have to make this guy pay. So his, yeah. Uh, what else can we do? Can we do a barcode or something on this while we're at it? Sure. What we else can, can we? Uh, so we can add, let's do a code 128 because with some of these, these are all the formats it supports, right? UPC A, E, A, uh, Jan 8, 13, code 39, 8, ITF, code 128, code 93, uh, NW7. Three of there's nine, there's limits to, nine, to yeah. the format that you need for those, yeah. but code 128 is pretty flexible. Okay. Um, 
So, so, we'll do that. so we need, you know, he's a, it's a $999 fine. It's pretty pricey, but so, he could also trade that in for four years of our training. Right. So he could give me a $999. <laughs> we'll give him a four year license for our training and stuff. Yeah. So there you go. Let's do this. We're, we're going to say, uh, fine is $999. Yep. Yeah. And then what we'll do is what? Hey Peter Gaines, what you th what Peter Gaines says nice demo. He appreciates that's good. But I mean, we try to do this every day, right? You understand that, right, Peter? Right. So any days where you feel like it's less than, you know, we get. I guess we could always hand you guys a rating card and send us a rating for this, right? So, like yesterday's like the opposite, right? Today, today, you know, yesterday was like this, like strategic visionary, and then you know, and then today is like here where the where the rubber meets the road. Here's your printer. I mean the opposite. CEO of Claris, and then we got a receipt printer. It's like. Eh. So what I went ahead and did is we put in. We told him that his fine amount is nine nine hundred ninety nine dollars, and we're going to give him a payment link at this QR code. We'll take us TV. Oh. We'll feed us, and then we'll cut. Oh yeah, baby. All right. So oh, yeah. I'm going to stop sharing so we can watch this print, and then oh, I yeah. will use my phone to go to to check that uh, QR code. So I click print. Oh so yeah. Done. All right. Now, as we can see here, we've got our. We can't see it yet. There we go. Hang on. Closer. We've got our title. Oh, that's yeah. bold. Oh, with oh, there we go. There we go. Payment link. Yeah. Blatant disregard for the law. Okay. Yeah. Now let's. See if it decides to focus. Yep. There it goes. Go. That's good. All that's that information's good. there. And then we're going to go ahead and. Here's my phone. Just a standard iPhone with the camera. Let's see if I can line these up here. And if it will focus. Oh, it did right up here. So now it recognized that URL, and it takes us right to. Notice we have a responsive website, so it remodels for the oh, iPhone. Yes. So it works perfectly. On, on oh my gosh! Look at that sexy web page. All right. <laughs> so folks, uh, step right up, pay your fine, get your uh, bundle. <laughs> so how much is this printer? How much is this printer about? Just so we have an uh, idea. I suppose it depends on where you buy it from, but let's look at. Let's find a well, let's start with suggested retail price, and I guess we could go to Amazon I don't know, and buy it. I don't it. even know if they have the MSRP actually listed on their Act, website. Well, we'll go to Amazon because that's like kind of like generally supposed to be kind of a okay. good price. Um, yeah. Let's see. And we will go to GSP six five four. So there's a few different models, obviously. Um, like I was saying, so you want to make sure that the one you get has uh, either web print or cloud print in the name. They've they've kind of combined the two together. It will work. It can you, like can you switch really back to your any. screen though, so we can see your screen? Oh, I th I'm sorry. I thought I did that. Amazon doesn't have this one listed at the moment that I'm seeing. Um, it it's hit or miss if they do because you've got to be careful. Make sure it says either cloud print or web print in the name. Cloud print is a new technology that allows you to run their web server on your own machine. Um, it's pretty cool, but web print is just direct to the printer. So let's let's look. I know this this website has them. So generally, be this one they list about three hundred dollars, uh, but. We have to make sure we I, oh, get the I'm sorry, I'm talking to you. I'm muted. So, uh, where is the oh. part that we have to, the text we have to look for? We have to say it has to have interface print or what does it have? <laughs> so it has to fun. have. It, it has to say web print. So, there you'll see there's multiple models here. All right, slow um, down. We're looking. Where say web print? Mm -mm, nope. Web print or cloud print. Yeah, Air print is nice, but it doesn't but. allow you to do these calls. Do they really not have? Huh. Let's just search Google for it. Here's a here's a company that I I have seen uh, that that does actually provide new and it's reputable. It's web print. It's two seventy five, and, and looks like you can buy it today. Okay, and this so one does have the Ethernet interface? Is it so you want the Ethernet interface with web with web, with web print is what you're looking for? Ethernet is in my preference because that way you don't have to deal with Wi Fi, but you it needs to have some sort of network interface for this to work. Right. Yeah. If it's just USB, it won't. Um, maybe there's a way, but it, it'd be pretty roundabout and difficult.
But, uh, well, Kyle could do it in about eight minutes, I'm sure. So let me see. So <laughs> Peter says, I use uh, I use Bartender in combination with FileMaker. So Peter says, I say this because I work all these days. I understand the stress it takes to position a cash drawer ticket correctly. Yeah, Cloud Print is Google. David Angel says, Cloud Print is Google question mark. No, so Cloud Print is another, it's it's another one of their technologies similar to WebPrint, it's an API. Um, the difference is rather than sending the request direct to the printer, um, you they have a web server uh, program that you host on your on like one of your machines or your servers on site or something along those lines. And the printer talks to that server, you talk to that server and it's sort of the intermediary. So that uh, that's Cloud Print. That's quite right, and that's something else. That's uh, you know, little little preview. That's something else I'm working on. But uh, web print is what nice, I think, because it goes direct to the printers. And that's what and we're using. That's what we're that using you, today. Yeah. That's what we're using today. So right. it's because exactly it, when we were talking about doing this webinar, I was never quite clear. So web print and cloud print are similar, but this one where the web printer is it's a web server is actually in the ch on the logic board here. This right. one here has a server that is doing it. And if you had a big restaurant with a bunch of printers, maybe that'd be the way to do it. I'm not sure. Absolutely. And it's not a heavyweight program. It's it's not that you need some blade server or something crazy. It's just it requires that much more infrastructure. Yeah. Well, I mean, the folks, I mean, here's the deal. Everyone who does FileMaker in a serious sort of way, either you have a need for this or you're going to have a need for this, right? The time is coming where you're going to be required to basically – uh, build this for someone. I mean, uh oh, I'm inverted here. Hang on, let me, let me flip myself. So it looks like I'm looking at the con, looking at the content. So, uh, yeah, it always people like when you're looking off the side of the screen, they're like, "What the hell is he doing?" So, yeah. So the idea here with this material is that you're going to either need to do this, or you have needed to do it and you haven't done it, or you turned down a project because you didn't know how to do it. And we actually have a solution here. Margaret hopefully is going to share the sample file with everyone. Margaret. Yeah, I'm Good. working on that. Can you walk? You're working on it? All right, we'll work faster. Uh, can I uh, <laughs> have you walk through the code so we can see the script execute the code that you Sure. Ran? Sure. Do we want to look at the building code or just at the sending code? You mean the part where you build all this together? Uh, no, I yeah. from, the, from the time you hit print, okay. it's, it's going to sure. reel all this stuff up sequentially and then shoot it out, I'm sure, right? Yep. Um, so I'll show you. It's it's pretty straightforward, and this would be pretty easy to drop into an existing project. Uh, so um, we'll get we'll talk about that. So our send button here. Um, click that, and it's going to pull up the send script. And I'll just step into that. All we have to do is pass through the value of these three fields here. Uh, if it's what IP address it is, if there's a port, and if we're going to be uh, HTTP or HTTPS. So we'll step in here, uh, pretty standard starter here. Um, I'm going to set a default for secure false. That way, if somebody doesn't click that for some reason or manages to clear that out, it uh, it'll just go with false. And we assign we use the assign. Uh, I like to use the assign custom function here. Okay. Or uh, for getting our parameters. So now you can see we've got an IP address. Our secure is false. And since we didn't pass a port, there just is no port uh, variable at the moment. OK. Um, so we'll make sure that there is an IP address and tell them if there isn't. Um, and then if we're good, we go ahead and step into our generate document script. This gives us the basics. So this starts off the. Uh, this gives us our content by listing all of the related. Oh, you use a list uh, function to get. Mm -hmm. oh, wait a minute. Is a list function, but you're using it against a related table? Is that what it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I'm just I'm just spacing this. Okay, so uh, Larry, wherever Larry's at, this is on the certification test, right? So, know what the list function does. And uh, whether it works on related records or local record, yes, yeah, right. If you want local records, you have to use a summary. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, that, and that's one of those like horrible. Maybe they might. You know, I don't think they'll fix it. But um, if you want yeah, a, if you want a local, say he was referencing a local file, and he wanted a a value list uh, to get that to generate that. We know this from watching Nick that you'd use a summary field, 
with that weird option at the bottom to give you the list. But if it's related data, you can use the list function. So really it should be the list function only, just very simple, but for whatever reason, Claris and Clay Mackle and the people down there, when they crafted it, the only easy way they could do it, easy for them, was use a summary function for local uh, data. And if you're going across relationship, you use the list, uh, a summary, a summary field for local data and a list function for related data. So there you go. All right, right. Keep, keep going. Yep. So here we'll create our contact ver our content variable, and I'll show you the 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 contents of that variable. It's just a little bit smaller here. So uh, each line, uh, except for the ones that are really long, are different are each different elements, uh, and so they're all carriage returned, which we will change here in a minute. Uh, and it so this, so, is, this is the body. This is what tells the printer what to print. Okay. So this is would obviously be very difficult to handcraft. Uh, it would take you a really long time, and you'd probably have a lot of <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of errors, uh, which makes these scripts much more useful um, for for trying to do things programmatically. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, all right. So we'll create our body element, and that adds in the the uh, beginning tags that they expect to see. These are standard XML tags. Mm -hmm. Tells us we're in XML version one, what the encoding is. Um, this XML name space is, they get basically customize their name space. Um, so they like all this stuff here is important. So they ins the, so so we're um, inserting that the XML wrapper around this thing a little bit is what we're doing, right? Yeah, I, I mean this, this is clearly XML, but for whatever reason, they want the inside already encoded. To me, that sounds like they forgot to URL encode the body. Or they're uh, just lazy, whatever. Pick the issue. Right. That's fine. All right, so, cool. keep mean, going. Whichever way. Yeah. But, yep. So that gives us our request element, which then has everything listed in it. Um, we, we concatenate everything together here, and I'll show you what that step looks like, uh, just because it's not the most clear. Move this out of the way. Show that. So this is all very static, never changes. Uh, we add our starting tags, like you saw, namespace. Bring the window a little smaller so I can zoom in, or oh, na narrow. Sorry, yeah. Not, not so wide. So used to such long calculations. There right? we go. Here we go, everyone. So we're gonna we're looking at <laughs> this in much bigger detail here, right? So yeah. There we go. So, yep, so we add our start tags and all that stuff. We do that manually since it's pretty short and never changes. We add in this root tag that already has the carrots changed. We uh, add in the content where we substitute out all the carriage returns to just be empty. So that way uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't cause ex problems with the XML. Uh, shouldn't generally, but occasionally it does. I found that it does. So it's just simpler to always I hold one second. Larry, you got to know the substitute substitute function and the filter function. You got to know it like the back of your butt. You really got to know that for your <laughs> test. I'm just telling you because because Larry wants all the tips for certification tests. So substitute filter got to know must must must. It'll be on it'll be on multiple questions in a test wired a bunch of different ways. So well then I'll, I'll show you in a minute an even more advanced substitute that I use in a different script. Oh, but, okay, uh, great. Just you're gonna cause Larry's head to explode. So. <laughs> I might I might make him pass the test though. Oh, there you go. That could be too. <laughs> so so then we add in our our uh, our end tag here and the last two end tags that are actual just standard XML and that's it. Okay. So we'll we'll close out this edit. Close that. Close that. And we'll step out of this. So we just return our body. Okay. We test the length. Um, I don't know that that's strictly necessary, but. Uh, we, we uh, oh, I was passing it in a in a very previous test where we passed the content length. I guess it's not necessary. We do our curl options here. Um, these are fairly standard. You can see I have some debugging ones like show error, dump header, uh, things like that, but pretty straightforward. We tell them it's XML. We add in the body. Um, if anybody hasn't ever seen the at dollar sign, this is really nice because it means you don't have to escape all of your double quotes it just does it for you um super convenient but so we go ahead and create our curl options which i will also show you yeah, what they look like at the end this is what it'll tell it to do uh 
I guess I should leave that up for longer. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're I mean, you're ripping through <laughs> a little fast, but it's not too bad. Uh, I don't have any squealing, so either people have left, or you're bored, or you're overwhelmed. <laughs> so there's no squealing. Nathan, Raccoon Ops, Alpha Lima nine two six fifty one. Hello. Hang on a second. Everyone's dead, Jim. They're dead, Jim. What the hell? Right. Hang on mm -hmm. one second here. Give me a second. Well, a lot of people are typing though. They're not typing. Oh, we do have. They're, we do have a dead question from like David much earlier that I wanted to like hold. Um, oh. Do you know anything about fiscal printers? Uh, I am not familiar with those at all. I, I'm assuming a fiscal printer prints checks or something like that, but I'm not so familiar. Maybe David has. A fiscal that, printer. Where, where are you getting that at, Mark? I don't even see that conversation. Where's that at? It's way. It's it's way up there. I held it because I didn't want to derail the whole conversation for it until we were getting towards the end. A fis a uh, fiscal like F I S C A L like like money related fiscal. This thing apparently. David, is there a particular country you're looking for? Because Star has different ones listed based. Oh, on Azerbaijan it. printer. Is that, I didn't even know that was a thing. And this one actually qualifies for that in Azure by its own. You might have to buy one specifically that's fiscal, but um, looking at this here, uh, I guess Azure by John here, this this series, this is the printer we're using. So I guess you could use this with certain fiscal printers if you're in the right countries. Uh, it must really like sure. it must like snitch on you and report to the government every time you print a receipt. It's got to yeah. be. I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, I don't know it what else it does. Merchants. Larry said it keeps merchants from not collecting sales or VAT. Yeah, exactly. This is a this is a government snitch printer. They if they tried this in the United States, people pull guns and start shooting. <laughs> Sir, I'm being serious. Uh, I'm, you guys I'm just, think I'm, I'm just glad we don't have to deal with that. That's all I can say. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So will this work with a fiscal printer? Uh, probably okay. because the auto snitch routine will be something transparent to you. Yeah, I guess it, it looks like it depends on on what country you're in. They may have a printer that would. Combine both of those for you. A fiscal printer is not online. Then how does it snitch, David Angel? It, it has to be online. It stores it in a chip. Okay. Oh, so they'll take the printer and look at the chip to see if they're audited. It stores a tray on board. The agent comes to check. All right. So the last step here is just to send this via a curl. Uh, so we pass through the IP. If there's a port, we add a colon and the port. And then we just put it on this endpoint star web print slash send message. That's all you got to do. Um, and it has all of the data in the body here. And we just go ahead and click print. And now that it's been a second, it's going to give us a transferring dialog. But it will come out here in just a moment. And there you go. Just like that, it is printed. And... Uh, I could show it again. It's the same exact thing we just printed, though. So I'm not sure how much that helps. Where did FM Go go? Does it work on FileMaker Go? John it asked does. a question. Yep, it works in FileMaker Go. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't require any special thing. Just as long as you're on the same network. Yeah. Or you're capable of reaching that device. Right. That's it. Good. All right. See you next time. Adios, everyone. We'll make sure you get the sample file. Cool. Great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Trying to rally down 10. 9.25 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. 
Brady takes the shot, goes down, stands in, throws it left for Amidal, reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10, Ooh. rolling to the 9. Ball slightly behind him, again he makes the grab.